you need help. You need someone to bounce ideas off of. You need support on good days and bad days. You need a coach, a mentor, a therapist, a community of people to support you. And if you don't have that, your success is probably going to take a lot longer. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I am going to talk to you today about the characteristics of successful people. And I know that this has been studied all over the place for many, many years, and yet we still need consistent reminders of these things because honestly, we might have some of these, we might be good in many of these areas, but we all need a little freshening up, right? If we want to grow, if we want to change, if we want to be the kind of person we want to be and be successful at what we do, not just in business, but in life and in relationships and everything, then a lot of these characteristics are really, really important and they've been studied over time. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, the things that have been studied and universally what a lot of people, um, you know, people like Lolly Daskal wrote this book about the leadership gap and, you know, she talks about this in her book, but she also, and I have not read the book, but I know that this is something that um, I was speaking with about somebody in a networking group recently. Um, so there's like these general characteristics and then I've added some of my own. So what I feel like has brought me more success over time, some of the things that I'm focusing on. And one of those things um, specifically that I want to start with is community. And before I get to talking about the characteristics of successful people, um, for many of you who have been, who follow the news, have watched the Today Show, who, who understand what's going on in the world on a regular basis, which no judgments if you don't, I try to stay away from the news as much as possible. But uh, last week, um, actually it was probably a couple weeks ago now, um, there was a school shooting in Oxford, Michigan. And for many of you guys know, I'm from Michigan, but what you might not know about Oxford is that it's the community right next to mine. So I would consider, I, although my zip code is not Oxford, Michigan, it's Lake Orion, we are right next door. We live and breathe and move and do business and do church and worship and all of those things with our fellow friends in Oxford. Uh, one of my best friends for many, many years lives in Oxford. Her children go to a hybrid version of the high school. We, we are very um, intimately acquainted with what's been happening in our community. And I say our community, not because I live there. I didn't go through the same traumas that these people have gone through, but I am very closely acquainted to the community. And it has many, many effects. Um, I'm not going to get into politics. I'm not even going to get into the details. I will not give weight to the tragedy that has happened and my opinions about it. We all have opinions about things like this, especially this, but this senseless act of violence that took away four teenage kids from their parents. When I talk about the characteristics of successful people, I'm talking about community and how community can come together even in the worst of circumstances. So I'll limit the details. Um, you can Google that, it's all over the news, so feel free to Google it and look up whatever you want. I'm not interested in the talking heads and what they all have to say about the situation. I'm interested in a community that is going through great tragedy and hardship and needs healing and support and love and each other. And so um, a young man walked into the school after being talked with by different uh, school officials for some other disturbing behavior and decided to open fire and 11 people were injured and four students passed away and there's some still fighting for their lives. So this week there's going to be four funerals for for teenage children. Of course, this is unthinkable and there's something that we should not have to be talking about at all. But some of these things that I'm gonna talk about today, these characteristics of successful people, are what we need in order to be successful at everything. Successful at supporting one another. Successful at 
business and relationships and seeing things and being aware of things around us so that we can serve one another in the community. So whether it's your community or an online community or your work environment or wherever you are, all of these characteristics apply because in general, we want to become better people. And the way that we can become better people is using some of the characteristics and the principles that are in here today. So that's what I'm going to talk about. And it's in light of this, because this is part of my being. This is deeply affected me and my family and those around us in, in a way that it would affect a parent. So no, I, I, I don't know any of them personally, but I know people who do. And I know the people who work and breathe and move in this community. And we are all um affected and it's a wake up call as well to be able to be aware of the people around you and so with that i have never seen a community come together and mourn together and stand together in such a way as this so oxford you are strong and i'm proud of you all in this community despite the challenges and the unthinkable hardships you've been through you are being a light to the nation by standing together by banding together by not forcing blame but instead just thinking about what happened and coming together as a community to protect and love and care for those that are hurting so Cheers, Oxford family. You're doing the right things. The schools, you all did the right things. So congratulations on that. You guys are a successful community. And thank you for demonstrating that through your care for one another. There have been women that have been making meals and randomly dropping them off at addresses because someone needs some help. They don't need anything in return. They're just giving and loving because hurting people need support. They need someone to talk to. They need someone to care. And so when I'm talking about community, that's one of the first things that's not on anybody else's list of characteristics of successful people. But what is community? It's a body of people having common rights, common privileges, common interests, common goals. No one does anything great alone. You need help. You need someone to bounce ideas off of. You need support on good days and bad days. You need a coach, a mentor, a therapist, a community of people to support you. And if you don't have that, your success is probably going to take a lot longer. Be in community. Be part of a community. That means that you have common goals, rights, interests, things like that, and that you want to both serve and be served. So community is extremely important characteristic of people who find success in all that they do. Another characteristic is courage. Bravery, risk, guts, balls, chutzpah. This is one of my favorite words for that. It's a Yiddish, Jewish word for like unbelievable boldness. It's like the quality of mind that enables you to encounter danger and difficulties without, now and I, I hesitate to say without fear because we all have fear, but we're willing to put it aside. Courage, boldness, resolution, able to deal with and face danger without flinching. So to do the unknown, to be successful, there's a lot of things you do that are going to be unknown. You're not going to know how. You're not going to know where. You're not going to know with whom. You're doing something new. And because of that, you have to be brave enough to face it. You must know that there's risk. That there might be danger. There might be a little fear. And, you know, when we're talking about business risks and things like this, that's not dangerous. It's just a little bit scary because we don't know what we don't know. We don't know for sure. We don't have the confidence to know that what's going to that we're going to find success because maybe we haven't had much success in our lives. The, to face possible failure and be brave enough to face it regularly. Successful people have courage. They also have determination, aka drive, persistence, grit. 
you know, you see somebody, you know somebody that's determined that you are just, like they say, they're hell-bent on doing this one thing. You know, firmness of purpose. That's what determination is. Making up your mind about something. Are you determined? Or do you waver easily? Do you toss to and fro with the wind? Be like, oh, maybe I want this. And maybe I want that. And I kind of sort of want this. Or are you determined? Or do you have firmness and purpose? Have you made up your mind that you will succeed? Continuing or repeating behavior supported by a belief that a specific result will come. That's like my hybrid definition there. Persistence. Continuing and repeating behavior. Not willy-nilly, not random, not a little bit over here and kind of sort of over there and half-ass in, right? This is continuing and repeating behavior supported by a belief, your belief that a specific result is going to come. Dedicated, successful people are determined. They will accomplish a goal. They might have some timelines, they might have some things that, that, that they do, setbacks, this and that, but they are determined to reach the goal. And they're persistent in their consistent behavior, repeating behavior, persistent, continuing to do something. Successful people. You're not going to like this one. I don't like this one. But it's just true. Discipline. I don't know. I wish I, could, I was in a room right now where I could see a, a show of hands of who loves the word discipline. <laughs> it usually reminds you of something like parent-child where you have to discipline someone. But the reality is you develop the, the, the definition, I guess, of discipline is developing specific behavior by instruction and practice. So being instructed and practicing those instructions. I mean, let's be real. Even though you're, own you're your own boss, even though you're an entrepreneur, even though you don't have somebody standing over your shoulder telling you what to do and how to do, you can't just do whatever you want and expect the results. You must take action. You're going to have will give something up in order to attain obtain something better. Discipline. Not my favorite word, but it's very true. You know, along this long journey I've had for from building my own business and um, staying up late and getting up early, I've had to sacrifice sleep, time with friends, time with family. I've even lost some friends over time. People that just no longer aligned with, with what I was working towards and didn't support it or for whatever reason just didn't understand it and it created some distance. Discipline. Self-discipline. Since we're all grown, no one's going to stand over us and tell us what to do in our own business. We have to do it for ourselves. We have to have self-discipline. And that goes along with your determination. When you're determined to reach your goals, when you're determined to be successful, you must be disciplined. Self-discipline. What's one thing you can do to be a little bit more disciplined? Is it making a schedule and sticking to it at least maybe two days a week? Look, we're not shooting for the stars here. Sometimes we have to just step small. Dream big, step small, right? We're stepping small. And so what is one thing you can do to be a little bit more disciplined this week? Maybe it's keeping appointments to yourself, for yourself. Keeping your own appointments. Go to the gym once. Take a walk. Clean off your desk. Something disciplined. Repeated, continual behavior gets results. Another characteristic is commitment to learning. Now, I don't know about you, but I have, I have admitted to this many times. I'm addicted to learning. I love to learn new things, and I love to learn and practice them. And sometimes I get a little bit over my head of, like, going all in. Like, if I'm learning a new skill or you know, some sort of new practice, like, everything falls by the wayside because I must learn this new thing. And it's not any object syndrome. It's just something about, like, just learning, whether it's learning a new hobby, learning a new skill in your business. I like to 
learn and then practice and learn and practice until I get it right. And it takes a while and it takes practice, but commitment to learning. So you can't grow. You can't improve and change if you aren't willing to learn and study new things. Always learning, always practicing and improving. Accept your growth and decide that you can grow more. Because honestly, we all, I think, are waiting, right? We're all waiting for the shoe to drop, right? We're all waiting for, for this arrival moment, the end of the journey, maybe to, to, to finally get there and jump on top of the mountain and say, yay, I made it, I did it. And those moments are awesome and amazing. But most days are ordinary. Most days we're going through the motions, we're just doing the tasks, we're doing normal every day-to-day things. And we have to be constantly learning because the moment that you get to the top of whatever mountain you're climbing, you know what you're going to see? You're going to see the next mountain in the distance. If you look down, you get, might get weak in the knees because you're going to see how far you come and how far you might have to go back down into a valley in order to get up another mountain. But you must be committed to learning because new mountains equal new opportunities to learn. Maybe there's things that you haven't conquered yet and you have to keep moving. New levels, new devils. I know my favorite... Um, Preacher uh, Joyce Meyer says that all the time. When you reach new levels, you're going to have to fight off new devils. New things are going to come that you're going to have to learn to take care of because there is no such thing as arrival. As long as you're breathing and moving, you have a purpose and you have things to learn. Optimism. Now, I'm not a lover of this word. I was searching in the English language to try to find a better word than optimism because we hear this word and it just sounds so fluffy and so like, oh, positive thinking, positive mindset, optimism, you know, and that's totally me and I get it. And but there's it's not everyone. My husband is the opposite. If it was if there was optimism and pe- pessimism, my husband and I are exactly those things. He is always thinking worst case scenarios and the what ifs and yeah buts. And I'm always like, it's going to be great. Don't worry. And so we're a great, we're a great balance. But really, characteristics of successful people, you have to have some positive, expectant faith and belief and confidence. Now, confidence comes with practice. Confidence comes with doing something over and over and knowing that you're getting it right. And that does not come right away, especially if you're embarking on a new opportunity. If you're new to business or you're new to whatever it is you're doing, you're not going to have confidence and you didn't earn it yet. So don't expect to be confident, but expect to be positive. So maybe instead of optimism, it's positive expectancy that believing that you can, believing that you're worth it, and positively expecting the results that you worked for. It doesn't mean thinking that everything's going to be awesome and everything's going to be, you know, without bump or hiccup or you're not going to run into problems or roadblocks and want to pull your hair out. What it means, this is just my definition, I guess, is that positively expecting the results you worked for. You put in the work, so you should expect a result from that. Not perfection, just positively expecting that if I continue down this road, if I continue to work hard and to refine my research skills or refine my bundle skills or um, put more money and more time into my business, I will see positive results. It's believing that you can, not perfectly, but believing that it's possible. It's a choice, a choice to believe that the outcome will reflect the work you put in. Now, you don't get to be optimistic when you aren't doing the work. You don't get to be optimistic and be like, oh, someday. You don't wish for it. You work for it. And then be expectant that it will occur. These few things are not necessarily the universal ones. These are ones that, you know, and, and some of these I've, I've adapted to my own personal success. Um, but these last ones, I believe, will make people more successful if they have these characteristics. There are things that I feel like I've been uh, working on in my own life and something that I think are really, really important skills as any business person, whether you're in service, whether you're in product-based, no matter what you're doing. 
these things are so, super important to be successful at life. And being sex, successful at life means having good positive relationships, taking care of yourself, taking care of your health. And this is one of my things that just in light of the things that have been happening is super, super important. Awareness. Awareness of yourself and of others. Now, I know in this age of technology, because of technology, because of phones and internet and computer and laptops and, you know, the listening device you're on right now or whatever it is you're listening or watching to at this moment would not be possible without technology. But for the love of all things good, get off your phone. Close the computer. Turn it off. Turn the TV off and look at people. Look around you, your spouse, your kids, your neighbors, your teachers, the clerk at the grocery store. Responsible for everybody. That's true. But we can be aware of the world around us. Do you know that a smile is free and goes a really long way? Friendly interactions. I'm not asking you to be your somebody's BFF, but to be successful in life means that you have to be aware of more than just yourself. You have to be aware of the world around you, their needs, their desires. You're in business to solve problems and meet needs. That's what we do in business. Every class, every book, every song, every product meets a need or solves a problem. To do that, you have to be aware of the people around you. Not just so you can create a product and make money off of it, but be aware that there are real human beings behind screens. I mean, 30 years ago, this wasn't a thing. In order to meet someone, you had to get in your car, drive somewhere, go somewhere and do that, or pick up a phone and talk to a person. Love texting as much as everybody else I really do but there is no substitute for personal interaction face to face I suppose I'll let zoom be part of that face to face but it's still this thing being aware believe it or not even a phone call a text a handwritten note can make a difference and you have no idea how far your reach can be by just doing that I'm going to tell you the story. When my dad passed away of cancer, this was uh, 2017, um, he passed away of cancer. And a few months after that, um, I received a picture from one of my uh, coaching clients from long ago. Her name is Erica. Erica, thank you so much again. I will never forget what you did. And in this time of grief and hurting and dealing with loss, she did a benefit walk for cancer and she lit a candle and a lantern in my dad's honor with his name on it. Now your name is something that's very special. Your name is something that you own forever and it's part of you. And to see my dad's name on a lantern lit up in the sky and someone walking on his behalf as to cure for cancer on his behalf, someone that didn't know him from Adam, but knew me and knew I was hurting. I'll never forget that. What can you do or say or be for someone else? Something so small, something free to be aware of people around you. People that are hurting, people that are lonely, people that are, might be a little bit weird and strange and you're just unsure. Sometimes a smile, a note, an awareness is all they need. You don't need to be BFFs with everybody. But being aware of people around you, you have no idea what people are going through or where they've been or the story that they have or the morning that they have or the life they have. So kindness goes a long way. Being aware of others and their needs can create success in your own life. Success as a person as a human. Patience. Everybody's second favorite word next to discipline, right? <laughs> P 
patience. It ain't gonna happen overnight, friends. Be patient. Results aren't fast. The ones that hang around and are worthy and are permanent are not fast. My climb to a million dollars was 10 years. Now, it doesn't mean it has to take you 10 years. Hopefully, I've given you a lot of shortcuts and it won't have to take you that long. But the reality is it's not fast, but it's worth it. The results you're going to get are cumulative efforts of your consistent actions and choices over time. You know, I hate, and this is around the holidays, of course, right? We've got, you know, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, like all these different things. And then diet season is what I call it for the whole two weeks of <laughs> diet season. I mean, I'm laughing because it's like by eating the chocolate and the cookies and the extra cocktails and the chips and all the yummy goodies between Halloween and New Year's Day. That's how it happens. We don't just all of a sudden jump on the scale overnight and go, oh my gosh, I gained 20 pounds. It just doesn't happen like that. And in your business, it's not just going to happen like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden I made, you know, 100 grand. No, it's going to be cumulative efforts of consistent action. I know that sounds so, I don't know, corporate or something, but it really it is. It's the truth. That's where your results will come from. And you have to be patient. So all of these added together, put them on like stair steps, like community, determination, persistence, awareness. All of these things. Small habits are the sums of our lives. Our lives equal the small habits and the small consistent actions we have every day. That is something to pay attention to. Be, be patient, friends. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with others. Be patient with your business. Do the work, but the results are going to come. You just have to be consistent at it. Another one that I have added to this list is integrity. Integrity is who you are when no one is looking and how you treat others who can offer you nothing. People need to have integrity. People buy from other people. People need to trust you. And one of the things that they can see, even small children, even teenagers, even people that have not reached a level of matur maturity, really understand the integrity of a person. You know, have you ever had a feeling that someone might be a little shady? Usually your intuitions are correct on that. So successful people really need to have integrity. They need to do the right things for the right reasons, even if there's nothing to gain, especially if there's things to gain. So integrity is something that people really, really need when it comes to the characteristics of business. To be successful, you need to be honest. You need to have high integrity. You need to make sure that what you say you're going to do is what you do. You need to be trustworthy and that's part of your integrity. It's putting other people first. It's Integrity is like, I know some of you guys are gonna squirm in your seat a little and that's okay because this is just something that's part of it, right? It's Integrity is like putting your grocery cart back where it goes instead of just leaving it there because you're in a hurry and it could door ding someone else. Integrity is putting that cart back. Not because somebody's looking or because someone's watching, because they're not, but because you actually care and value being honest. So thinking about that, be a person of integrity, trustworthy, honest, upfront, admit is, what you see is what you get kind of a person. And finally, my last and certainly not least characteristic that I've kind of added to this list is servanthood and generosity. I feel like that goes into one because you can be generous with your time, with your resources, with your money, with everything. To serve is to love. To think of other people as more important or as equally important as yourself. One of my favorite quotes is from Anne Frank and it's, no one ever became poor by giving. So when you learn something, share it. Look to give. Look to seek it out. It's not just for like, oh, pat myself on the back. I get this attaboy good feeling uh, when I give. But really, it's 
to really understand that abundance is everywhere. I know, especially in marketing, especially in online training, all these different things, everyone wants you to believe that it's scarcity, that you've got to get it now, and they force you into like FOMO and different things like that. But honestly, scarcity is bogus. Abundance is everywhere. Success is unlimited. Your earning potential can be unlimited. But you need to be serving and giving in some form or another. You know, nothing is really fully enjoyed until you actually share it. And this is like, it's like a story of like when you eat something, when you try something for the first time, it is like the most phenomenal thing that you've ever had. You have to share it with somebody else who's never had it. Like, do you ever get that feeling where you're like, oh my gosh, this is so good. Here, take a bite, take a bite. Also, you want people to share in your misery, right? They say misery loves company. So why is it that people take bites of stuff that's gross and they're like, oh my gosh, this is disgusting. Here, taste it. You're like, no, I don't want that. I don't want to share in your misery. So these are the type of things I mean, like servanthood and generosity, thinking about others. You need to be in on it. So when you, when you learn something, when you discover something for the first time and it just lights you up, it is not fully complete until you at least get somebody out in the world to un understand and enjoy it as much as you do, right? I bet when you first started with Amazon and you were super excited about this opportunity and all these things, you were telling everybody and some people's eyes were glazing over and they're just like, what are you even saying? Like, I don't know about all this stuff, but you're super excited about it. So they lean in and they're like, okay, let me help share in your joy. And that's just what I mean by servanthood and generosity is that no one ever became poor by giving because you have no idea your small giving, whether it's time, a text, a phone call, uh, sharing something on Facebook that you've learned, the, this hoarding and scarcity mentality doesn't get anywhere. The rising tide raises all ships, meaning the more that you give, you not only lift others, but you lift yourself as well. So be a servant. And I don't mean a servant, like you must lay down and be a doormat for everybody and it's all about service and nothing about you. Yes, you want to make sure that you are, are taking care of yourself and that, you know, especially moms, especially moms and dads, especially you guys who are serving a family, you're already serving enough. I understand. But I'm talking about with your business and being successful, that is part of why you're a successful parent because you're always giving and serving. Let that trickle over into your business. Let it trickle over because the good, honest people with integrity will value your ideas, your sharing, your comments, your encouragement, whatever it is. So you guys, when you're thinking about all these things, if you really want to be a successful person, a successful business owner, a successful parent, a successful spouse, remember these things. And right now, don't get so overwhelmed. Maybe you're terribly impatient. So maybe that's something that you can work on this week. Maybe you really struggle with determination and you're constantly giving up on yourself and your dreams and revisiting them and coming back. Find one of these things that you can do this week and just focus on it. Just one thing. You don't have to look at everything optimistically in sunshines and rainbows, but you can choose to believe that the work you put in will give you the results you're desiring. Discipline, oh, we don't like this word, but we can do this. One small thing to be disciplined. Maybe you do the absolute worst thing that you hate doing first to get it out of the way. That, my friends, is discipline. Community, respect each other, lift each other, share something, give something, support someone. Reach out in a DM and just say, hey, I see you, I hear you, I know you're struggling. We've got your back as a community. It doesn't mean you have to give them two or three hours of your time. How about two or three minutes? That can change a life. So when you're thinking about these things, and if you have a desire to become more successful, pick something from this list and focus on it. Maybe you can pick one for each month of next year, and you can just say, okay, in January, it's about community. In February, I'm going to go with courage and I'm going to study it and focus it and focus on that. And then maybe it's, you know, determination and persistence the next month or, you know, a commitment to learning, whatever it is. 
study these things because it's not just about how to's. It's not just about tutorials and learning and executing strategies. It's also about your entire being, holistic approach to business, your mindset, your health, your finances, your how to's. Yeah, all that kind of stuff is fine too, but it's an overall development of the person that you are and the person that you want to be. You guys, I know that you could be anywhere else doing any other thing right now. I appreciate you listening to the Amazon Files podcast. And if this podcast encourages you, if it inspires you, if it motivates you, if it gives you a little tough love, like a slap and a kiss at the same time, share it with somebody. Tell them it's one of your favorite podcasts. Leave a review. Why? Because it helps others. It's a part of being a community and serving and helping. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.